Welcome to Code with Srini. In this lecture, we're going to look into Weave Encapsulation, which is the most underrated concept in the whole of Angular. In general, when we create a component using ng-gc and the component name, ng will generate four files that are uh, component name with the ts uh, and html specs.ts as well as the scss for example if you look at the folder structure here you can very well look into this like the for the app component which is generated by default will have uh, any component will have html scss specs uh, ts uh, and uh, the main typescript file we're going to focus right on style sheet file that is scss and the style information is scoped only for that component which is whatever you uh, style for the app component scss will be scoped only for the app component ts so before we go any further on view encapsulation uh, we have to look at the concept of shadow dom okay so what's a shadow dom if you're not come across shadow dom don't worry it is just a specification that encapsulates DOM tree and styling information. So in simple terms, the shadow DOM styles will not leak the styles to the outer element. Okay, we're gonna look into that uh, quickly. So before that, uh, let's proceed with uh, cre creating some components, right? So that could be NGGC, uh, let's say some useful component. And let's create another component called NGGC breadcrumbs. Okay, so we have created a two components. Um, like I said, when you create a, comp create a component, we'll, we'll be having four files generated by default. And we're going to focus more on the CSS part, which is the CSS part generally. And through CDN. All right, so I just added Bootstrap um, by just adding it straight away into the index.html file, main file. Um, ideally, you should be doing that in the CSS uh, file. Okay, in the app component, uh, let's add a created component for now. So I'm gonna just ignore the router outlet. Okay, I just added two components. One is the app breadcrumbs and the some useful component, right? So I'm just gonna go to the breadcrumb component and add a simple navigation. Let me go to the useful component, ng on it, because uh, once the template template is loaded, the ng on it fires up which is a paragraph uh, tag hopefully I'm going to fetch the paragraph so let P equals document dot query selector yeah query selector and I'm gonna query the paragraph tag sorry paragraph element and then gonna issue the inner HTML I'm gonna give it a tick marks and then define a style so I'm gonna define two things. One is the H1 with the color of, let's say blue and an anchor tag. So once you execute it, now you need to remember that I modified some code in the useful component. Once the component is exposed, once it's exposed, it goes into the, it bleeds out the styling information to the rest of the component, which we, which we shouldn't need it. I'm gonna add some information over here. So the H1, v or n you got it so this part works as expected but it is not intended to do that this is just an usual javascript query selector wherein you fetch the paragraph element and modify its content using the inner html okay now the problem here is the styling information for anchor tag as well as h1 tag leaks outside this paragraph element so if i have another anchor element which I have as a breadcrumbs that's going to be styled with color red as well which we really don't want it to happen let's see what happens in the browser after this change now if you're building a component and you have to make sure those styles are only scoped for that component why shadow dom for example you may want to use a component built by someone else that component may have some styles defined and when you're going to use a component in your application we don't want those styles to override ours Okay. So that's where the shadow DOM comes in. Now, what does shadow DOM has to do with Angular and view encapsulation? Well, that's a very good question. Now let's look at our TypeScript class that has a component decorator. This is the component decorator. We can add a property called encapsulation, right? You will have an encapsulation and view encapsulation. Once you add it, it will add it on the import statement. The view encapsulation is just a bunch of enum numbers and it will have four 
categories for, for members of enum numbers like emulated, native, none, and shadow DOM. Native and shadow DOM are, uh, are same. Okay, native is deprecated as of uh, 610 and we need to use shadow DOM instead of native and we have none emulated. So when we when we look at it, it is actually three enum numbers that we can use, which is emulated, none and shadow DOM. Right. So what's an emulated mode? I'll just give it as emulated. Oh, by the way, emulated is the default mode. Before going further with the emulated, I'm going to create a component called ngGC test. So some useful works and test works. We have added two components for this. Emulated is the default mode. Since most older versions of browsers won't support Shadow DOM, Angular creates an emulation using some tricks by adding an attribute containing surrogate IDs such as ng content C0, C1 and C2. I mean, if you go on further, it will just add up the numbers and that that maybe that acts as a, an ID. This will eventually create a scope styles. So let's look at styles and elements generated in page using inspect element. If you notice, there is ng content C2 applied to the paragraph element. And in the styles, the same attribute rule set has been applied. For example, paragraph of uh, the attribute and color is applied to it. Okay, this is scoped only for this component. Okay, this is how an emulated uh, view encapsulation works. Right. So basically, Angular uses attributes to set in our elements. Now that we don't have to worry about managing these ng content attribute, Angular takes care of everything as about setting the ID, setting the attribute ID or surrogate ID for each and every components that it encounters. Okay. So you don't have to go manually changing these um, set these styles in your main style sheet. It doesn't work that because this is dynamically generated by Angular. Okay. Uh, and that's how emulated encapsulation works in Angular. Okay, the next one is native or shadow DOM encapsulation. Native enum is deprecated and moved to shadow DOM as of Angular 6. Once we change view encapsulation to shadow DOM, the styling information for some useful component in the main page is gone. Okay, before that, we need to go and analyze our style information. Add some style information such as, um, let's say, and as usual, the padding of uh, 10 pixel. Okay, so right, we can see our styling information in the for the main page for the body. And when we scroll down to um, to our component, which is some useful component, you can see a shadow root, and it will have a bunch of style information. Okay, so whatever we write for a paragraph tag, paragraph element, it appears over here. So the shadow DOM is pretty much similar to an iframe, but not exactly an iframe. Okay, so uh, all all the styles that are defined for this component is scoped and will not interfere with the outer world. So even the styles that are defined outside this component. So for example, the styles that are defined outside this component is a bootstrap, right? So we have bootstrap over here in the main link, and let's see if it interferes by giving a button and the type s button with primary obviously the bootstrap classes are btn btn primary let's see how, how that works see the bootstrap is applied in the main index html which is right over here but once you move a component to a shadow dom this loses the style there, there won't be any styling information for the for the button okay to overcome that, you need to add that, you need to include bootstrap over here to get the style information. So basically the shadow DOM elements are not obeying the rule sets of styles that are defined outside. And this is pretty much about the shadow DOM. So the last one is view encapsulation is set as none. So what happens when you do that? Obviously your styling information will be bleed to the outer world, which means that your app useful component, the scoping and everything is lost. Your useful component and your styling information will be written generically, which is not which will not have a scoped information. So a paragraph tag with a color of red will be painted all over your component, as well as in the breadcrumbs, if you have any anchor tag that are set to color as red, even that will be coming from this useful component. It is safe to say that 
we can keep this as emulated for now so that will emulate all your styling information and rule set and you are safe to work with regards to styling in your component okay so basically the styles that are defined in the component will eventually leak outside so when you go back to your browser and we can see the styling for the anchor element is painted red so what we learned is here is the default view encapsulation is emulated as shadow dom it works by attaching additional css attribute and elements hence uh, whatever you write inside your uh, component whatever style information you write inside your component is scoped only for that component Thank you for watching Code with Shini. Please subscribe and share my content as well as do comment if you have any queries regarding Angular. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.